ओके आई थिंक नाउ आई एम ओके विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल बोथ ओके नाउ इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द प्रोडक्ट मैनेजमेंट दैट इज द इंट्रोडक्शन सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई एक्सप्लेन हाउ पार्ट ऑफ द फर्स्ट यूनिट ऑफ ब्लॉक वन इन दिस सेशन आई विल एक्सप्लेन रिमेनिंग हाफ ऑफ द फर्स्ट यूनिट so remaining half it starts from here now 1.5 that is product classification and differentiation okay so how we classify products so what are different bases the first base given on the basis of durability and tangibility products can be classified into three uh, categories so first it is given non durable goods and non durable goods say that is uh, tangible the second one given uh, durable goods so these are tangible okay tangible means uh, there is the physical existence it means we can touch those uh, goods and the third given services services uh, that is intangible it means we cannot uh, touch services and uh, then uh, we have on the basis of now you see i think uh, that is uh, okay let me select that so that i can draw and then it will be much easier to understand okay here i am now on the basis of use so on the basis of use uh, products can be classified uh, as the consumer goods and industrial goods so next uh, here you have okay consumer goods means uh, ultimately used by the consumers or customers or end users okay in case of uh, consumer goods uh, those uh, products are used by end users but in case of industrial goods uh, it may be used for uh, manufacturing some other uh, kinds of products uh, or it may be uh, for industrial purposes then uh, you have why product differentiation so tell me so reason reason is to uh, differentiate product okay why product differentiation means to create significant product okay so if there it is a need in the marketplace to uh, get a kind of product uh, which are quite significant quite important for the customers then in that case uh, we need product differentiation so product differentiation can be through uh, many different uh, ways so the first uh, that is given the form through form uh, products can be differentiated the second given the features through features we can differentiate products third given performance uh, quality means by changing the quality of the product we can uh, differentiate products a uh, fourth given the uh, conformance quality Uh, fifth one durability by changing the durability and six given reliability seven given style eight given uh, repairability and a ninth given customization so through these all things means first given that is by form means by changing the shape size structure we can uh, differentiate the product second given features by changing some kind of feature we can uh, differentiate product in the same way by customization now you can see in the last one it is given customization it is according to the requirement of uh, the customers we can change the product uh, then that it is uh, under customization then the repairability there it is given in eighth number so repairability means whether the product can be repaired easily or not and if it is not uh, uh, easy to repair the product then uh, that is uh, the drawback of the product so that's why it is very important uh, for uh, uh, the product to be repairable so so i yeah then uh, you have a uh, next uh, service differentiation just like here there it was given uh, product differentiation there you have service differentiation so there is the difference in between the uh, the product and the service so product the particularly there it is uh, physical uh, existence and in case of a service that is intangible it means there is no physical physically you cannot uh, touch uh, the services so here given service differentiation is when physical product cannot be easily differentiated 
okay why we need service frequency assign when physical product okay so just like uh, uh here you see earlier uh, i talked about the form performance uh, durability reliability style repairability so these all things uh, when these things uh, are not be able to change then in that case we can uh, change the intangible aspect of the product intangible aspect of the product means that those aspects of the products uh, which uh, uh, we cannot touch for example here given uh, ordering is it means how easily you can order the product so by changing that means uh, making the ordering very easy we can uh, differentiate the product second given delivery so how we deliver the product uh, if we change the way we deliver the product to the uh, ultimate customers or the customers uh, which need a uh, product so then that is also you can say a way for service differentiation then after installation uh, the way products are or uh, products are being installed that can also affect uh, uh, then you have uh, customer training customer consulting and returns so customer training and co uh, customer uh, consulting so this things also include in service differentiation okay that means how we service the product to the customers in this way we can differentiate product by changing the service aspects of the product then you have next 1.3 that is product and brand relationship so how product and brands are related with each other now you can see on your screen there it is given uh, each product can be related to other products to ensure that the firm is offering and marketing the optimal set of products you see each product can be related to other products means that the alt means here uh, if uh, many products are available then in that case uh, those products should be related with each other so why to ensure okay so the reason is to ensure that the firm is offering and marketing uh, the optimal set of products optimal set means whatever uh, number and the type of products uh, are required by the customers on the basis of that if uh, if companies are providing the products then uh, that uh, it will be optimal set of products then product mix has the following okay so here given the product mix has the following means so width length depth consistency so how many different uh, product lines uh, are there means in case of width how many product lines are there in uh, product length uh, total number of items in the mix in case of uh, product depth how many variants uh, in each product in the line that is the depth then consistency means how closely related the various product lines are in, in use so these are the aspects of product mix means uh, how product mix can be explained so these are the ways through which we can explain those product mix okay so that is the way then you have this product mix dimensions provide you see given on the screen this product mix dimensions provide the handle for defining product strategy in the following four ways okay so these are the dimensions just like uh, length width uh, product length product width with uh, uh, product depth and product consistency so these dimensions provide okay so that's why here you can see on the screen written these dimensions so here i'm talking okay here uh, there it is given this dimension provide the handle for defining the product strategies okay on the basis and by considering this dimensions of the product we uh, create or you can say we make strategies for product 
so how so now you can see the first given add new product line so whether to add the new product lines or not if you know product lines then in that case only how many product lines are there so on the basis of uh, that information we can conclude that uh, whether there is a need for adding uh, more product lines or not so that is the widening product mix second given lengthen its existing product lines so whether uh, the existing product line means whatever products are available in uh, existing product lines uh, uh, are sufficient for the customers customers needs or not if uh, the you know products are available in the product lines uh, are sufficient for the customers needs then there will not be need for any kind of uh, addition of uh, products but if uh, there is you know lack or you can say that it is insufficient it is insufficient product available in the product line then in that case we need to ex you will say lengthen the existing product line then the third one given add more product variants so okay so more adding more product variants may deepen product mix so that can be just like why to add the more product variants so due to the change in the customer test of preferences or due to change in the style or many factors so which affects so uh, those factors which affect the consumer behavior so if uh, any one of uh, these factors uh, changes then in that case uh, there it may be the requirement to add uh, more product variants so because uh, human wants are unlimited next you have more or less product consistency depending whether it wants to have a strong reputation in the field maybe more or less product consistency so whether there should be consistency among products or not uh, that will be decided on the basis of the reputation in the field if there it is a need for you know product consistency then in that case uh, products should be similar to each other or the quality should be on that or you can say the quality of product should be at a very good level then you have line stretching line stretching means adding or dropping items from the line according to profit so line stretching is adding or dropping items or you can say add, add, adding or dropping products from the line according to the profit so if there it is more profit then in that case uh, more items or more products can be added and if there it is lost then in that case so we need to remove so it can be upward or downward or both ways so line stretching can be upward downward or both ways okay so here uh, so in case of upward stretching so what happens when we go to the upper segment of the product then that is upward stretching when we go to the lower segment it means if we go to the segment where uh, the price it is less or the quality it is uh, uh, less than uh, that it will come under uh, downward stretching or in case of both ways stretching uh, products products uh, you know can be produced uh, for both uh, upper level uh, or upper segment or the lower segment then you have line filling okay here there it is given the line filling adding more items within the existing product range okay so what is the line filling means adding more items within the existing product range so why there it is need for adding uh, more items or more products within the existing product range so the reason that it is given for incremental profit incremental profit optimal utilization of capacity is uh, to offer full line of product uh, in response to dealer complaints uh, 
so now you can see what happens so reason first there it is given uh, incremental profit so if there is uh, the possibility to get more profit by uh, adding uh, more products uh, in the existing uh, product range then we uh, need to do that and if there is optimal utilization of capacity for example if any uh, manufacturing unit has more capacity than uh, what it what it is producing uh, at a particular moment of time then in that case uh, more products more kinds of products can be produced and those products can be added into the existing product range so so these are the reasons and then another reason given that in response to dealer complaints so dealers may also ask for more you know more kinds of products so that's why producers may produce uh, different kinds of products uh, which can be added into the existing product range now next up, uh, point given there it is product planning product planning means what is given hmm. okay i think that is integrated approach to product planning i think that it should be don't change the product okay i think there it is something mistake so you should just get away from there okay Okay, don't change the product. So product planning, uh, it may involve don't change the product uh, or marketing strategy so that it happens. So the this may be the possible. So I'm going to explain the possibilities what can happen in uh, product planning. So don't change the product. So if the product uh, is providing uh, satisfaction to customers, um, then there is no need to change the product at all. So why do change if uh, existing uh, products uh, are so products are uh, providing satisfaction uh, to customer so there is no need to change then the second given don't change the product but change its marketing strategy okay in the first there is a marketing strategy also so if uh, you know current uh, range of products are providing uh, satisfaction or fulfilling the needs of uh, customers then there is no need to change the product or the marketing strategy marketing strategy also need to change in the case when there is requirement uh, or you can say whenever there is more possibilities uh, for the product then in that case uh, market strategy can be changed it may be due to uh, more possibilities so that uh, the company can get more profit or it may be due to uh, the product so are not uh, being uh, demanded in the market uh, as it was uh, intended so in uh, those cases uh, it is possible to change the marketing strategy second given don't change the product so if uh, product is uh, providing uh, or uh, providing the satisfaction to customers then there is no need to change uh, the product uh, but change its marketing strategy means uh, if there is need that more possibilities are there then in that case change the marketing strategy third given change the product so if a uh, current uh, range of product uh, is not able to satisfy customer uh, needs then in that case uh, product can be changed or there is need to introduce uh, more products or different kinds of products then fourth given discontinue the product if uh, the existing product is not satisfying the customer's uh, need then in that case uh, the product can be discontinued then the fifth one introduce new products in the product line so these all things uh, depend on so introducing new product in the product line also due to the demand of the customer so what the customers demand okay on the basis of that uh, such uh, planning or you can say such uh, steps can be taken strategic product planning system so what is this strategic planning sorry strategic 
product planning system so that it requires information on the current and future anticipated performance of its existing product by considering the consumer's perception you see strategic product planning system is uh, in this system what it requires it requires information on the current so for this system uh, information is required on the current and the future performance of the existing product okay means whatever the product it is available in the market so uh, about that product uh, we need information so information it uh, may be on the current and the future anticipation is uh, what is the current demand of that particular product or what it will be or uh, the future demand in of the product future demand of the product so that kind of thing then you have eighth uh, <clears throat> that is roles and responsibilities of a product manager so product manager are responsible for marketing marketing planning developing product strategy and implementing that strategy through various marketing tools so the role of product manager is marketing planning so product managers plan the marketing strategy they develop product strategy means so whether to develop the product or not and uh, you can say by uh, marketing research uh, what kind of products uh, are required or what kind of products are demanded by the customer so this information can be gained from the marketing research and implementing the strategy so here you can see marketing planning developing product strategy marketing plan developing product strategy and implementing that strategy by using various marketing tools so that's the responsibility of product manager and the second given employees here you see here I am he employs matrix structure matrix structure of the organization in which a product manager is charged with the success of a product but has no direct authority over individuals producing and selling the product so now you can see here on your screen it is uh, visible that uh, here uh, in the left hand side that is written product uh, team manager and uh, below ceo there is written functional manager okay so product team managers uh, are responsible for overall success of uh, any product for example here in the left hand side three products given so product a product b and product c so product team manager is responsible for the success of the product for which he is assigned for example if a product manager is assigned product a then uh, uh, overall over he has to uh, you know overall he has to supervise the success of product a okay by using uh, different now uh, you can say functional strategies or you can say by using the knowledge of different uh, okay different uh, functions just like engineering sales and marketing product design research and development manufacturing so product manager used to to take help okay product manager used to take help uh, from from these experts means experts from the marketing or product design research and development and manufacturing and uh, of by using or you can say by combining the knowledge from these all uh, functional areas the product manager needs to you know make uh, the product success okay that's the okay i think that is clear and one more thing here so whatever now individual or in the mock in matrix structure in case of matrix structure uh, the functional employer you can see the people from the marketing is responsible or you can say 
can be guided by both just like sales and marketing manager also that is the functional manager and the product manager both so that uh, person has to take uh, order from both from the functional manager also and from the product manager also but overall the superiority is of functional manager product manager only can take help from uh, these different uh, functional areas